All right, today we are in section 8.4, and we're using systems of equations now to solve word problems, real life word problems. This one is from page 377, it's number seven. And the reason I picked it is because it is a perimeter problem. Perimeter problems are very important and you need to know them for next year's geometry class and for this year's final. Perimeter and area, you're assumed to know what the perimeter of something is and how to find the area of a square or a circle. And then to use those formulas when setting up your word problem. Does anybody remember what the perimeter, how do you set up the perimeter of a rectangle? Does anybody remember? Just draw a nice long rectangle like that. Yeah. We're going to draw a rectangle. And we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll first of all name the sides with variables. Okay? So let's call this x and this y. All right? That's your first step. A diagram is always good in a word problem once you get a sense of what you're, what you're looking at. Now, uh, let's read out the problem. The perimeter of a rectangle is 160 feet. One quarter of the length is the same as twice the width. One quarter of the length is the same as twice the width. Find the diameter of the rectangle. Well, here's your rectangle. It's a sketch. Here's your x and y. And what is a formula for perimeter? First of all, what are we dealing with when we deal with perimeter? Anybody know? The outline thing. In other words, if you start there and you go, you walk up here, you walked x feet, let's say. Um, you walk y feet. You walk another x feet across there and another y feet back you've gone around the perimeter of the rectangle. And what do you do to x plus y plus x plus y? Better put an x and a y there too. Do you subtract them, add them, multiply or divide them to find the perimeter? You add them, right? Because it says, if, like I say, if you start here, if this is your home, you walk around the perimeter means you add up all the distances you walked. Fair enough? So the perimeter, let's put p equal but um, it's going to be x plus what? Y. x plus y. Is that enough? No. 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 What else? Plus x plus y. That's right. x plus y plus x plus y. Which? Could you just do 2x plus exactly. y? Exactly. We can write p equals 2x plus 2y. p equals 2x plus 2y, where p is the perimeter, and 2x plus 2y, because you have to walk through 2x's and 2y's. So that's one of our formulas. Now, in the systems of equations, we're going to have two equations, and that's one of them. Where are we going to get our other equations? Does anybody know? If you read the second sentence, what does it say? One-fourth the length is the same as twice the width. So which one is width and which one is length here? Length is y. Length is y and width is x. So let's translate what that just said in words into algebraic equation form. One quarter the length. So the, what would that be? One fourth y. One fourth y. And we'll set it up with x first though. And twice the width would be? Two x. So it would be two x equals a one fourth y. There it is. Because that's exactly what it said. Right, Chris? One quarter the length, which is one quarter y, equals twice the width, two x. The same as means equal. The words the sa is the same as means equals. Is everybody clear on that? So now we've got a simultaneous equation. So how do we solve this? Now, one last thing. The perimeter equals this, but what does it say the perimeter equals? 160. So let's put equals 160. So that's true. We can. All right. Let's just put that because that's what it is. Now, there were three methods we used to solve two equations. What were the three methods we used? With Jonathan? Substitution. Uh, substitution was one of them. That was what we learned in 8.2. Addition method or elimination method was what we learned in 8.3. And what was the very first thing we did? What did we draw? Graphs, right? So for this we could use the graphing method, the substitution method, or the elimination addition method. Which one do you think we might use? If you're just looking at that, graphing took quite a while, right? So let's say we need to do this quickly. And what, anybody have any ideas of which one might work for you? Addition. What? Addition method? Well, yeah. Addition method usually works when they look very similar, but one's close to the opposite of the other. Substitution. Yeah, I think you're better with substitution. Why? Because you've almost got x in terms of y or y in terms of x. You're almost there, right? One step and you've got yourself y equals something or x equals something. Divide by 2 is one way, or multiply by 4 is the other, right? 
So which one do you want to do? Multiply by four. Let's multiply by four on both sides. Four times one quarter is going to cancel the fours, and we're going to just end up with one. That's right. And you're going to get 8x equals y. 8x equals y. But now we can substitute that into here, right? Now, I don't want to confuse you too much, so I want to rewrite these now. So let's write 2x plus 2y equals 160 and y equals 8x, all right? So we just rewrote that, and now what we're going to do, put a little arrow here, double arrow, yeah, that's fine, 2, 2x plus 2, and then we substitute. That's it. Now x equals 160. We've replaced the y with 2x, and that's why we put it in red. We replaced the y in this equation. It was 2y, 2x plus 2y. Now it's 2x plus 2 times 8x equals 160. And we're, we're on our way now. It's all downhill from there because now it's just uh, collecting like terms. 2x plus 16x equals 160. 18x, 18x equals 160. And now we divide by 18 on both sides and we're gonna get x equals, well, it, everything it divides by two, 80 over nine, it's 80 over nine which in mixed numbers, 80 over 9 equals, quite make it, so it's 8, eight and um, 8 ninths, 8 and 8 ninths feet. Thank you. 8 and 8 ninths feet. Remember, we're talking about feet here, so let's put a foot or something there. And then we'll box that. Now, we're not done, right? We've only found the x. We still have to find the y. But see, in this rectangle, we've actually found out that that's 8 and 8 ninths feet. We still haven't found out what y is, okay? All right, so we're looking now for y. We have to solve for y. We found our x, and now we've got to find y. Well, we've already figured out that y equals 8x, so why not use this equation that we, we took that from the written part? y equals 8x. I'm going to write it down up here. y equals 8x. It's a simple substitution where y equals 8, and x was 80 over 9, so we put it in there, and we go ahead and solve it. y equals 640 over 9 which is a fraction that we can then reduce. Uh, 640 over 9, if we write that as a mixed number, then we're going to get something like what? 9, how many times is 9 going to 64? 9 times 7 is 63, so we're pretty close with that. So 70 and 71 and 1 9 that's right, 71 and 1 9 feet. Okay, that's a lot long, it's a lot longer than it is wide. Box it. 71 and 1 9 feet in the diagram. So your x is 8 and 8 ninths, and your y is 71 and 1 9 <coughs> That's your x and y. That's your solution. And on the rectangle itself, which is probably more relevant, you can see now that we have a shape. We have 8 and 8 ninths feet and 71 and 1 9 feet, okay? which is a real life problem, okay? That could happen if you go into carpentry or any kind of thing to do with home construction. This is the kind of question you may need to answer when you're estimating, or even if you don't, even if you go eventually own your own home or buy a condo or whatever, you gotta paint it, put carpet in it. All of these calculations come in handy because you gotta figure out what the best quote is. Somebody might give you a quote per square foot. Oh, I'll paint the house, it's gonna be a dollar square foot. Well, you gotta figure out what that means. How many square feet are there in your apartment, in your house? And what is the price? And is it better than a guy who just gives you a flat rate of $2,000? You have to calculate it. You gotta do it yourself. If you don't, you're at the mercy of what people tell you. And it may be right, it may be wrong. So you need to know the numbers and you need to calculate them yourself. You'll need that all your life. Whether you're swinging a car deal, you're buying a car, and you're trying to figure out insurance, or the rates that have to do with your lease payment, or your loan payment, percentages, calculations, numbers, perimeters, area, home construction, all these things are real life problems that you need to use numbers and algebra for and that will be very useful to you as you move more into your adult years. Golden years.